Welcome to the forge, my wanton wildlings. I'm your creepsmith, and I hope you like my work. Hello, wildlings. It's often said that myth contains a grain of truth. The same might be said of urban legends that serve the same function in modern society. The idea that buried in there somewhere is a reference to something true or a person or a creature that could have actually existed is compelling. The trouble is, how buried is it? And is it the grain that you think it is? Tonight's malicious myth, from the creepy pasta wiki, The Mirror Man. Uh, hello there. My name is Jesse, and I had heard that this site is where people would submit their stories that were, well, creepy. I've read a lot here, mostly the stories that you would read about monsters, supernatural things, serial killers, even haunted items. I've also heard that most of the stories are actually true, but I never did believe it. I didn't think stuff like that existed, well, except for the serial killer part. My point is that I always thought these things were hoaxes, and just that. That is, until the mirror man. You see, I go to high school in suburban Massachusetts. It's really what you would expect a normal high school to be. Regular classes, everyone has their own group of friends, you know, the usual stuff. No, the school isn't haunted. No, it wasn't built on a Native American burial ground. Nothing like that. It's a completely normal school. But lately, mm, let's say about two, maybe three weeks ago, a rumor had started floating around school. It wasn't the usual rumor of who's cheating on who or who's pregnant, no. This was more one of those urban myth rumors that you would hear about. The guy who started this rumor, let's call him Tim. Tim was a well-known guy. He was that one fella in school that everyone liked and one day he came in with an almost triumphant smirk on his face as if he was parading around. One of my friends, Dan, had gone up to him and asked what he was so happy about. And Tim responded, I beat the mirror man, as if that was some sort of achievement. To which, Dan asks, who's the mirror man? Basically, since I don't want to keep doing this whole who said what thing, I myself will tell you who the mirror man is. The Mirror Man is the quote-unquote spirit who will appear if you say the words Mirror Man into a mirror three times when you're alone. Now, I know what you're thinking, another one of those bogus mirror tricks, like uh, Candyman. We all tried the Bloody Mary thing when we were kids. We all found out it was bullshit and that no ghost would pop up ultimately leaving us disappointed but relieved at the same time that nothing was going to come out of the mirror and kill you. At first, I thought the same thing about this. Tim must be pulling a prank or something, right? Our whole lunch table gave him our skeptic responses, to which he replied, If you don't believe me, then why don't you try it for yourself? A few of us nodded at each other and just said, Okay. And then we went back to eating our lunches. The rest of the day was pretty normal after that. I went home, did my homework, and, you know, that was it. My mom and dad were away for the week on a business trip, so I was home alone. Though I didn't mind, because at least I still had my dog to keep me company. Time went on, and eventually it became nighttime. I had just finished brushing my teeth in front of the mirror when the thought of that rumor came up in my head again. I figured that, hey, why not do it, if only to prove that it was really nothing. I turned off the lights and stood in front of the mirror, took a deep breath, and then said the words. Mirror man. Mirror man. Mirror man. I waited for what seemed like a good minute in the dark. 
nothing happened. I knew it was fake from the start. I smiled to myself and I went to bed, waiting to rub it in Tim's face. Morning came, along with school that day. Uh, the first half went pretty normally. Then came lunch. We were all there talking about what we usually do. And then came in Tim. And then Tim came in. Only something was different. The usual aloof look on his face had faded into an expression of worry and deep thought. He had never seemed like this before. He sat down slowly and we all asked him what was wrong. He was silent for a moment before saying, I saw him again. We asked who it was that he saw, eager to find out what was doing this to our friend, but he only gave a shaky reply, the, the mirror man. I rolled my eyes at this. I thought he was pulling some stunt to get attention from us. The mirror man isn't real. I tried that last night, I said. Tim turned to me and then shouted at me. He is real. And I saw him again last night. He's coming for me. He said he would. This caught the attention of the other tables in the area as well as the teachers. The entire cafeteria went silent as he shouted, He's coming for me! One of the better known teachers had grabbed him by the shoulders and escorted him out of the cafeteria. The fuck was going on here? Fast forward a few days later, uh, the rumor of the mirror man had spread throughout the school, onto the internet, to everywhere locally. It had become a craze by the time my parents had gotten home from their trip. I had told them everything. I had still continued to do the mirror man trick every night, but no matter what, I would never see the supposed spirit. However, many other people in school had apparently seen him, even if they didn't do the mirror trick. They would just be staring at the reflection, fixing their hair, etc., and then out of nowhere, their reflection would just distort into the mirror man. But why wouldn't he show up for me? I didn't understand it, and it frustrated me. Then, on the morning of last Monday, the entire school had been called into the auditorium. This never happened, unless something really good or really bad happened. And with the recent news, I sure as hell knew it wasn't anything good. The principal of the school had stepped out with a grave look on his face. He'd walked up to the podium and Tim had died. The police had found his body in his room after they'd broken the door down. I couldn't believe my ears. Was this really happening? No. It it couldn't be. How had he died? Had he really killed himself over this whole mirror man thing, or was something else going on here? Then later that night, I had signed on to the school's website. School had a chat system implemented where students could contact other students about when papers were due, help on projects, things like that. I was chatting with my friends and other kids about that day's events, and then suddenly a message popped up. Guest Mirror Man has logged into the chat room. I looked at the message for a few seconds. Was this some kind of sick fucking joke? Because nobody was laughing. He said nothing when all the other students called him out. All he did was post a link to a picture in the chat. The moderator banned him immediately afterwards. I clicked on the link, uh, beside my better judgment, and I wished that I hadn't. What I saw in that picture, that'll haunt me for the rest of my life. It was Tim, but it was his corpse, pale and lifeless. His jaw was hanging open as if he were screaming. There were dozens of shards of glass dug into his skin, including two larger ones that were stuck in his eyes. There was blood everywhere, and carved into his chest were two 
parallel lines lined up vertically with an X slightly overlapping them. I was appalled. I began to cry. He was a kid for fuck's sake. Who did this to a kid? Why had they done this to him? Instinctively, the first thing that I thought was the mirror man. Was he real? Did he really do this to Tim? All these questions buzzed in my head. I started feeling nauseous. I ripped the cord out of my computer, making the screen go black, and I just cried. Over the next days, things only got worse. M more kids were missing. More ended up dead. And each time it was done, a picture of their corpse ended up on the school website under the screen name Mirror underscore Man. Eventually, I just stopped clicking. I knew what the picture was as, as well as everyone else did. The school was shut down by the police soon after that. The FBI started questioning people. But one thing that I kept on my mind the entire time was, why couldn't I see the Mirror Man? I shouldn't even be asking this. I should just consider it a blessing and leave it alone. But I wanted to know why. One final time, I went into my bathroom. One final time, I turned the lights off and looked into the mirror. And then one final time, I had said, Mirror Man, Mirror Man, Mirror Man. My voice grew shaky and unstable with each time. My, my mind was about to snap. I needed to know. And finally, I saw him. My reflection started to distort, and it was replaced by another man. He was wearing a pair of jeans and an olive green hooded sweatshirt, but his clothes were bloodstained, and there were shards of glass sticking into him and impaling him like a fucking pincushion. His mouth was sewn shut and I couldn't see the rest of his face, but in his hand there was a bloody shard of mirror. I was petrified. How does one react to a serial killer staring him down? I didn't think this could be real. It had to be one big fucked up dream or a hallucination or something. I took a step back from the mirror. My heart thumping in my ears was all I could hear when, surprisingly, he also took a step away. Being cautious, I took another step away and so did he. Where I moved, he moved in perfect sync. And then I remembered I was looking in a mirror. I closed my eyes and shook my head and there it was again. Well, there was my face, but my clothes had changed. I was wearing an olive green sweatshirt and jeans, and there was a piece of bloodied mirror in my hand. I looked down, and there it was. All of it was true. There I was, wearing the exact same thing that the mirror man had worn just a moment ago. No. No, this had to be another trick, I thought. The mirror man was just fucking with my head. Then I saw the blood trail leading out the bathroom door. And reluctantly, I followed it. And it led to the door of my parents' bedroom. I kept whispering in a hushed tone as if I was pleading, No. No. Over and over again. I'd slowly opened the door, and there were both my parents, broken shards of glass piercing them everywhere, two through the eyes, and the two lines with the X on their bodies. So I knew the reason why I couldn't see him. Because I could always see him. I was the mirror man. I had done those horrible things. 
it was me. So, what was it? Our school kids were looking for a spirit manifestation. Bloody Mary or Candyman, that sort of thing. But it turned out to be something completely different. Maybe a possessing entity, a body jumper, or a budding altar looking for an excuse. And a host, of course. Maybe we'll hear more from this school and its town. Hell, maybe someone will call Sam and Dean, who knows? Well, stay scary, my wildlings. Remember, they're called cautionary tales, not hold my beer tales. And make the most of your nights.